Hi, and welcome to Talk Straight Bible. We're your host, Jeremiah. And Rafina Antonetti. We are here to do one thing and one thing only. Right, Rafina? Yes. <laughs> and that's Talk Straight about the Bible. Yeah, Talk Straight. Hallelujah. The Word of God is a lamp unto our feet and a light unto our path. Amen. Mm-hmm, Thank mm-hmm, you, Lord. Mm-hmm. So, we're going to start off. Well, we've been reading. We started. We started with, yesterday. In verse 20, and we're going to 22, but we're still in verse 20. There's a lot to discover uh. here and uh, still too much food. But I'm going to have my wife read the scriptures so that we can just jump right into it. And the word of God says, My son, pay attention to my words and be willing to learn. Open your ears to my sayings. Do not let them escape from your sight. Keep them in the center of your heart, for they are life to those who find them and healing and health to all their flesh. Wow. What a beautiful thing when we think about the Word of God and how it is life. He said it's life. And the whole concept of this, uh, you know, for, from verse 20 down to 22 is, you know, it's talking about the Word is health. And of course, the entire Word of God is health, but we just wanted to give it a title so that we can stay on this. You know, we know my son is a personal thing. You know, Solomon had received instruction from David, and then he takes that with the wisdom that God gave him supernaturally, and he instructs his son. And anyone who listens to the Proverbs and studies them, they are Solomon's sons and daughters. And we know that one came that was much wiser than everyone else, and that's Christ. But yet Christ said that there will never be a man or a woman who is who is as wise or who was as or who is as wise as Solomon was. Mm-hmm. So I had to use wisdom when I prayed about wisdom. Mm. I said, Lord, you said there will never be another man or woman like Solomon in his wisdom. I said, So can you give me ten percent less? <laughs> Just give me 10%. <laughs> so I want 90% of that wisdom because I want to live the way God wants me to live. And so my son, and then we talked about listening, or ten, attending our ear mm. to the word of God because that, my friend, is important. And I broke down some things yesterday about the word uh, kashab, and it means so many beautiful things. So if you want to listen to that, you can go back to yesterday's broadcast and uh, listen to that. Lord. Well, thank you, Lord. The Bible tells us that we should not only attend to the Word of God, mm. but the words of God, the words of God. And what I do like about this word here, debar, debar. Mm-hmm. Debar is a beautiful word because it speaks about the arrangement or placing of something creating order. Mm. When God wrote the word for us to read and to study, he gave it to us in such a way that it's a code. Remember all the spy movies, you know, secret code and all this? People can read the Bible, who even who are not saved, and they can get some understanding because they know words. Right, right, right. But the secret things of the Lord are revealed by the Holy Spirit. And that's why when you become saved and the Spirit of God comes inside of you, the deep calls to the deep. Mm. And you have this desire to know God. Some people follow it through by studying and they go into a life of studying. But some people say, uh, God is revealing himself to me through this and through that. And that's fine, but that's not the best way. Mm. Oh, yeah, God can reveal himself to you from a tree. But the bar is talking about an arrangement of words that are carefully arranged. And it speaks about his commandments, his promises, his utterance. And so therefore, in the Hebrew thought, words contain substance just as physical objects. In other words, you could touch a physical object. You could take bread and touch it. It is bread. But when the word of God becomes so tangible, in our spirit, that we can touch it. 
I don't know about you, but I've been through some trials where God gives you that one verse of scripture or two to walk you through that trial. And man, you can touch that word and you never forget it. Mm. Never forget it. There's a few capstone scriptures in my life that God brought me through when I was just a young Christian. And one of them is 2 Timothy chapter 1 verse 7. For God has not given you a spirit of fear, but of power, of love, and of a sound mind. I was going through some stuff in my mind when I first got saved or converted. And Jeremiah tells us that he said, I will heal you of all your wounds and restore health unto you. I will restore health unto you and heal you of all your wounds. And the other one is in the gospel where it says about the man who had all these demons in him and Jesus cast out those demons. And when the people came out to see him, they say he was sitting at the feet of Jesus dressed in his right mind. Wow. I held on to those scriptures to no end. And so we see that God gives us, and, and we, we, as a matter of fact, yesterday we spoke about it and I said by faith, knowing what I was saying, of course, that God's word is our sanctuary. And exactly, the bar means words that are collected mm -hmm. in an arrangement. Mm -hmm. And it is what? A sanctuary. Amen. It is his sanctuary, sanctuary yes. for us. And the bar is made of three letters, if I may. The Hebrew is beautiful. Let me just give it to you in three pictures. A door, a house, and a head. Here we seeing it, the head of the house and the door. Jesus said, I am the door. And God has given us his home to be our home. And the last picture is the resh, the head of the house. But actually it talks about the principal corner of all things. The principal corner, the first things. So here the word of God is given to us that we might walk through that door, enter into that sanctuary, and commune with the head of all creation. Amen. So as as he as he was just speaking, it, it's it's an arrangement or a placement of something in in order, in a creative order. And it's not a coincidence that the Bible is Canalized, uh, canalized, canalized. Yes, in the, in the way that it is, God had a specific purpose in how He wanted His yes, word he to be arranged, yes. so that we can understand it better. And and it's it's just a beautiful thing that we can look at it and say, "This is my sanctuary." You know, sometimes when we think of sanctuary, we're thinking of going into a physical place. You know, this is the sanctuary of the Lord. And and that that does mean that as, as well. But to know that God's word is our sanctuary, that when we walk into those pages that have been carefully designed and arranged for us, that we are covered, that we are um, hidden in that. Mm. Wow. Right? The secret oh. place. <laughs> I remember when my wife was going through this just a few months ago, she had to have an operation and the Lord was all upon her. Wow, I saw it with my eyes as she was crying out to God. And God gave her a song and gave her words. And as a matter of fact, he gave her Joshua chapter 1 verse 9. And when we went to my sister's house to visit, <laughs> you know, she in, in her restroom. That's rest he gave it to Yeah, in her restroom. In her restroom, the, 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 the shower curtain and... The, the, mat. The, the mat said Joshua 1, 9, and it was the, the scripture, be strong, courageous, you know. And what's interesting is that a sister, I think it was Sunday. The following day. The following day. That's the right. It was Saturday. Day. The following day, she gives her this, this plaque with Joshua 1, 9. Yep. And I said, babe, I think the Lord is speaking yep. to you. And she held on to that. And then the Lord gave me a song for her. Mm -hmm. Actually, he gave me a song, wrote it. And you, I think most of you may have you know, tapped into that service. And it was you keep holding on mm -hmm. to me. Mm -hmm. But the other thing about that scripture, it came, it came in threes. Because then Elsie had written to me, um, T sent me a text message right. that week right before I right. went into surgery <laughs> and she gave me that very 
same scripture. Oh, so man. I was blessed because God speaks to us. He surrounds us right he th that's our sanctuary the word of god he surrounds us with his word in our church we have the word written all oh, over all over the sanctuary um and who jeremiah yes. and, jeremiah and, and, and pastor joe had some posters put up and inside the little glass um, 35, frames. 35 glass frames. There's a scripture. Yes. He surrounds us. When we walk into that sanctuary, when we walk into that temple, when we walk into the house of the Lord, we have his word surrounding us. Yes. Anywhere we turn, we can look up and see a word that will speak to our hearts. Wow. wow. wow you know, and speaking of that, uh, Joe and I, we went to get the scriptures done. They're pretty big plaques, you know, uh, posters. Uh, posters. Mm -hmm, mm -hmm. And, um, and they're on like on plastic and beautiful. And, you know, we talked about the arrangements, but he said, you go ahead and put them up. Even mm -hmm. before we started, he says, you choose the scriptures, Jeremiah. Mm -hmm. So we went, we said, okay, let's do this. He says, you put them up. And so I was up there by myself. And as I put each one, oh, I was blessed going around the sanctuary, putting them up. And you know what the Lord spoke to me? He says, you have placed a, a wall of fire around my people. Mm. Because Zachariah said, I will place a wall of fire around my people. And I realized that God was talking about his promises. Mm. Oh, man. You know, see, and they were arranged in such a way mm -hmm. that it still speaks. Sometimes worship, I'm, as I'm worshiping, I look up and I see all the scriptures and I, I, I can see and I look at them all the time and it's still fresh. Oh, man. He mm. says, incline your ear. You know, mm. the word incline here yes. is an interesting word. I'm going to go ahead, sweetie. You go no, there. go. Okay, yeah. Go. You start. I'll finish. Let me... <laughs> and it, you know, it's actually the picture of, of, of a squash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And it's the picture of seed. You know, when a, when a squash dries up, it dries up the inside, but the seeds are still in the squash. And if you shake it, you can hear the seeds mm. in, the, in the squash. Mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. But there's another picture of this, and it's a picture of a basket where you put things. And so here you have the seed basket, mm -hmm. the seed basket. Yes, Squash yes. seeds were planted along the roots of the travelers mm -hmm. and nomads for future use by themselves and other travelers. Mm. That means you could take them, break them, plant those seeds, and squash will grow. Wow. Our mind is a seed basket. Mm. And as you read the word of God, the seeds of the word of God, as my wife spoke yesterday about the seeds, the spores, that's the Greek word, the spores wow. go into the mind and our mind becomes a, a seed basket. Let me ask you a question. If you shook your spiritual head, would you hear the seeds inside your head? Mm. Oh, beautiful. <laughs> beautiful. And so we have to understand that here, it also speaks about a sheet that is spread out. That's right. Go ahead, Rafina. Wow. That word, nata, is, I mean, I, I'm, I'm emotional today because yes. Yes, when ahead. I was reading this stuff, it was just like touching my heart to incline your ear, to bend down, mm. to, 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 to extend it, to <laughs> spread it out. And so when I started to read this part, now my husband and I do not study together in the mornings but we have the same thing here in mind about the seed basket mm. and are we allowing the seed of God <laughs> the word to be planted along the way so that believers as well as unbelievers can be able to use them at a future time wow are we allowing the fruit to grow properly so that which is inside can be eaten and nourish others wow that's what the Lord was giving me this morning. And, and, and I had this whole um, thought process this morning. And I'm, I'm telling you, I, I just, I'm a mess today. So I was looking at myself, mess. a good mess. I was looking at myself as a child this morning before my father. And I asked my father in heaven this morning, do I have your back as you have mine? And I was sharing that with Jeremiah. He said, go ahead, speak it, you know. And I said, and, and, and of course, I'm speaking in a human form here, human term, because we don't need to have God's back. Nobody has God's back. He's, he's got our back. That's it. But um, what I mean was, 
when when you're thinking of me, are you pleased with me? Wow. Am I doing what pleases you, God? Love it. Am I doing your will? You know, that's that's kind of like having God's back. That that everything that he's saying to you to do, you're doing it. And then I started thinking about my children when they were growing up and all the instructions that we gave them to help them to be more prosperous and more careful and more productive and how they did not incline their ears to the instructions given. And, and when that happened, how we felt over, how hurt we felt over those things, right? Mm. We were grieved. And then I thought about my parents when I was growing up wow. and how grieved they were over all the wrongdoings because I did not incline my ears to their instruction. Mm. Do you know that our Father in heaven can be grieved? Genesis 6, 6, and it repented the Lord that he had made man on the earth and it grieved him mm. at his heart. Mm. Can you imagine? Repented, that word means grief, sorrow, regret, but yet with God, still have pity for mercy us. still have mercy for us mm. and in psalms 94 5 10 it says 40 years long oh, was i grieved oh. with this generation my, my, my. and said it is a and 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 said it is a people that do err in their heart and they have not known oh, my, my ways. ways yes wow and in the ephesians 4 30 says and grieve not the Holy Spirit of God, whereby ye are sealed unto the day of redemption. And again, we see the redemption power of God. But yet, we can grieve him by not following in Jesus' footsteps, by not inclining our ear to his teachings, by not walking in his ways, by not teaching others the word, by being so busy, so caught up in our world activity that we don't speak about what God is doing in our lives, especially when we have opportunities and open doors to do so. Go ahead. I called a sister this uh, two days ago, Gina Coulter. She, she Beautiful spoke. Beautiful woman of God. Beautiful. Yes, amen. She spoke for the Women's Week. And I asked her, could you share another message for Talk Straight Bible? And she said, okay, let me pray. When do you need it? And I answered, you pray, you send it, and we'll put it up whenever, okay? Within a half hour, <laughs> she sent me a message of her mess. She sent me her message. She sent me her message that she 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 wants to the share. Lord gave it to her right there, yeah. An open door. She walked through it. She didn't wait for Amen. the door to close, wow. not even giving it a chance to close. Are wow. you listening? Wow. God gave her something to share and she will be sharing it tomorrow. She inclined her ear to the Lord. What will you have me share, Lord? It doesn't have to be perfect. It just has to be a word That's of right. edification God's perfect. Yeah. That's because right. God is perfect. Yeah. He'll make all things He'll perfect. Make it. He'll make it. Okay. Or are we hiding our seeds in a basket and not sowing it? And it's not easy for Jeremiah and I to get up here every <laughs> single day <laughs> but it's joyful, and, yes. and, 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 um, and bring a fresh word. Fresh. Okay. Because we don't want to, we, even though we're repeating some things, the yes. word is what God puts in our hearts for the day. Yeah. But we do it because, first of all, we love God's people. Yes. But the seed that God has given us is to be planted so others can eat from it. Now, I'm going to say, incline your ear to what the Spirit of God is saying to you. Revelations 3.22 says, he who has an ear, let him hear and heed what the Spirit says to the churches. You are the church. You are the church. What is God saying to you? Are you hiding the seed that God has given you in a basket? Or are you spreading it? Are you thrusting it out? Are you putting it down in front of people to eat from. Mm, wow. Oh my God. Oh my you God. Know, my wife is speaking oh this word God. and uh, tears coming out of her eyes. 
Oh my God. You know, I, I'm blessed. And I, we want to thank Brenda Monticello. She's on right now. Thank you for that beautiful daughter that you have that my wife spoke about. Beautiful woman of God. Please tell her to put a link of her books. She wrote a few books. Put them on our website. Uh, we want to, we, you know, we want to share that. Let me tell you. And yes, at times, as you know, you go through things and you're studying. You say, God, it's just, it gets so heavy. But the joy that enters in. I was just, just as I was studying, just, oh, God, your word is so good. Amen. Your Amen. word is so good. I don't want anything else but your word. You're so good. And my prayer every morning. You want to call it a ritual? Go ahead. And I start, I lift my hands up and I say, you know, the Lord said, he says, love the Lord with all your heart and with all your soul, with all your strength. These commandments which I give you today. Because wow. he said, hear, O Israel. Mm -hmm, hear, mm -hmm. O Israel. Mm -hmm. Love the Lord. He says, yes. These, this commandment that I give you today shall be upon in your heart. And you shall teach it diligently you, to your Hallelujah. children. And he says, and you shall talk about them when you sit at home, when you're on the way, when you lie down and when you rise up. And he said, you shall bind it as a sign upon your hand. Thank you, Lord. And you shall write them upon the doorposts of your homes and upon your gates. And then the, the, the prayer, they, this is the prayer that the Jews pray every morning when they go to the, to the sanctuary mm. of God. Mm. They say this also, they say this. They say, Baruch Atah. Adonai Eloheinu Malech Olam. They say, Blessed be you, Lord Hallelujah. God, King of the universe, thank King you, eternal. You are sovereign. Thank you, Jesus. And he says, Thank you for taking us out of a people and handing us your Torah that we might study. What a privilege. And let me tell you, there's a last part of that scripture. That, of, of that, it's a, that's a, actually that's what it, um, it's a prayer. And... Uh, and the beautiful part about it is says, you, when you finish studying, thank you, Lord, for you are the King eternal. Thank you for placing eternal life in my yes, heart yes, and giving yes. me the word of truth. Thank you, Lord. And I, and I ended with this, my prayer before I, I study, I said, God, remember in the Psalms, it says, remember, <laughs> I am a stranger on the earth. Mm. Please do not hide your commands from me. Wow. And the other part of Psalms, it says, Open my eyes that I may see wondrous things therein in your law. Hallelujah. Out of your law, I want to see it. Bless and me, open my mind to understand the scriptures. And then I study because I just want to know God. And you know what? Nata, the word, incline, means to spread out like a sheet. Yes. Spread your mind out. Say, God, here, fill it, fill it, fill it. Give Hallelujah. me the seeds of your word because there's so much during my day and I want to walk in the path of your commands. Amen. Be blessed today. Amen. And remember have a, that seed is not only for you, yes, and have but a, it's for others. Have a spiritful seedful day. How's yes. that? Yes. Have a spiritful seedful day. Sow your seed. Hallelujah. And so to the next time we Until see you. Until the next time. Shalom. Shalom.